Uh, oh, oh yes, uh, we are here at the um, State House. We, we have been received uh, gladly. Uh, we no more have to nickel do uh, into the night, but now we can always just monzora uh, any time of day. And um, this is something that we're really here for, and we can uh, individually uh, take part in the underdevelopment agenda of the of this republic. Uh, and oh yes, uh, we do understand that we've made a very wrong decision, but uh, we have to eat. We also want the the big houses, the the, the big cars. Uh, we also want to, to divorce wives and get new ones and also dump them again. And um, we also want to, to have action in, in offices. And uh, you can tell from a logical perspective uh, that um, the vision 2020 of this republic is to shina the, the nation uh, of all its remaining uh, resources, like... Uh, Nuzia Matrimbi, Kutu Nungo get a rubata, Kokum Soroso, Vijeta Rukum, Rugu Kushina, Kushina, Fagum Soro, which is Snobudaniko, yeah, like that. And we are extremely happy, uh, even for the old relations that we received when we got here. And uh, talking of ill relations, uh, right now I would also like to introduce to you my new band, which I will be playing with. The Ama 2000 uh, Chimrenga Choir. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, welcome to another episode of The Week with me, Comrade Fatso. It's been another crazy week, as ED has been crying out, Panama land deals at Chakupai, COVID denialist in chief, and Tanzanian president John Magufuli passed away, and Tendai Biti is being recalled from parliament. But first, the Mbinga in chief, I mean, the, the commander in chief, Emerson Pambirina Majet Nangagwa, made headlines this week after he was named in an illegal land deal. The press was accused of being involved in corruptly giving prime Harare land to controversial businessman Ken Sharp. I mean, I don't know what everyone is so up in arms about Sharp. The opposition always accuses Zanu PF of not being able to run a tax shop, let alone an entire economy. Our press is showing that not only can he run the tax shop, he can eat all of the Maputi in the aforementioned tax shop. It's his turn to eat, Ka. The MDC Alliance MP for Harare North, Rusty Markham, named ED in his court application ways demanding that the land deal between the City Council and Ken Sharp be reversed. Markham claims that the land deal was not only illegal, but was also a grand theft of land belonging to the people of Zimbabwe. The deal was apparently forced through by local government minister, July, I am the second coming of Chombo, Moib. It involved 273 hectares of prime land in Harare's affluent suburb of Pomona. The land is worth 205 million US dollars, but was allegedly undervalued to just 20 meter. Now that's what I call a discount. I mean, why don't they do that with Bon Marche with the T-bone sticks? I think our life is firing for this Ken Sharp guy, eh? And he's the same dude who was given that dodgy airport road tender, which was never completed. I mean, what does Ken Sharp CV say? Expert at land grabs and unfinished road specialist. While the MDC is rightfully going after ED and July Moyo for this, they should also go after one of their own, namely the former mayor of Harare, Herbert Gomba, who is actually the one who signed the land documents. Ah, corruption. That's what brings true unity between political parties. Maybe that's why all these MDC guys are leaving the alliance because no one does corruption like Zanu Piev. Ha! 
come home and join the gravy train. It also shows the real face of our ruling elite. Because recently, ED keeps making headlines about his dodgy deals with white millionaires. First Denderi, now Kensha. Because Zangpiev just say that they are fighting Mafet. When really, they are making Madiri with these rich white capitalists behind closed doors so that they can eat together while you, the poor, will suffer. Simple. In this week's episode of Garitsa Opposition Mudish, the Hurman is scheming to have even more opposition MPs recalled from parliament. On Wednesday, the Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Mudenda, was asked by the People's Democratic Party faction led by Lucia Matilenda to recall the MDC Alliance VP Tendai Liti and five other legislators. Liti said, I didn't think we should man. Liti then accused the Zanopiev cartel of the recall of Tendai Liti comes conveniently at a time where he was using parliament to expose massive corruption by Sapunda, which is owned by Kuda Tagwire, who is the top shatter of ED. Here at the week, we're extremely saddened and angered by how the Hurman is abusing voters by recalling their leaders of choice. We're gonna keep monitoring these recalls and keeping you updated. In some good news, Zimbabwe received more COVID-19 vaccine jabs from our all-weather friends, the Chinese, this week. Our Hurman received 400,000 more COVID vaccine jabs from China, including the Sinopharm jab and the Sinovac jab. The bad news is that our Deputy Minister of Health, Manguiro, doesn't actually know how many of the Sinovac vaccines were actually procured. And the Chinese ambassador to Zim says he doesn't actually know how many doses of the Sinopharm vaccine should be administered per person. Comrades, please get your facts straight. This is why so many Zimbos have vaccine hesitancy because they don't trust their own women. We the people need to be vaccinated. So be clear and give us the right information. In some sad news, Tanzanian president John Magufuli has died at the age of 61. Magufuli, a well-known COVID denialist, was last seen in public on the 27th of Feb, sparking rumors that he had caught the Rona, the bulldozer, as he was known, over the past year had downplayed the threat from COVID, had sent poor polls for COVID testing, and had said that God and Gunadira would protect Tanzanians from the virus. His VP announced on Wednesday that Magufuli had died from heart disease in Dar es Salaam. We say, and remember the proverb, be like Hopewell, be vaccinated, be vaccinated. We now cross over to Munya with the sports report. Thank you very much, comrade. Right, in today's sports report, this season's transfer window has revealed some suspected but nonetheless disquieting transfers. After blessing Chebundo and Lilian Timevu's transfer last week, Shurugwi United has gained two more players from Aston Chinja, where it seems all is not as it seems. James Makore will be returning to Shurugwi United after a tenure of almost if not more than a decade over at Aston Chinja, where he's been a formidable and integral part of the team since its conception, in fact, as a prominent striker. However, at Shurugu United, he will fall back to a full back, where no doubt he will have great success defending opposing wingers, given his inside knowledge. <coughs> Judas. Albert Gutu is also a returning prodigal son. He is continuing his role as a central midfielder, just being active. Neither here nor there, but I can go on and go quisi quisi kwa kwani reikoko. The transfer amounts for both players has not been disclosed yet, but given Shurubu United's history with indiscriminate and dubious purchases, we can only guess. In a recent interview, the two made it clear that they have no ideological qualms about which team that they are playing for, as long as it is the winning team. When asked, what do you stand for then? The two gentlemen replied, the national anthem. This has been it for the sports report. Thank you, Munya. In some spiritual news, self-proclaimed prophet and real-life conman, Hubert Angel, has been appointed by ED as presidential envoy and ambassador at large to Europe and the Americas. But we are kind of bringing in uh, all our connections in business. I think the president has actually shown that he is able to, to pull from all ecosystems and bring in people from all areas of life. The biggest problem I think that we find is when a person is called prophet or pastor, uh, that's where it ends. 
people forget that I've got two university degrees in finance, one in postgraduate post uh, in education from University of Bolton, a master's in entrepreneurship from University of Edinburgh. So, and I've got a vast knowledge of business. So, and I've got a lot of connections to bring uh, to, to the... Uh, to hey, I mean, what exactly is the portfolio? What was the job requirement? One, you need to live Kuchan. Two, you need to have recently bought a fake university degree. Three, your application will be strengthened if you have managed to convince someone to give you their Bentley. Because that's who our new ambassador is. A guy who bought a fake degree, conned one of his congregants out of his $300,000 Bentley, and then fled who you need to gain. No good ambassador at large, like a criminal at large. We now cross over to Chennai with the weather. Thank you so much, comrade. Uh, nothing much has changed from our last week's focus, as you can see here. It still looks the same, except that there is a cloud over presidents after he has been accused of some land, land grab deals. But other than that, most, 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 of, most parts of the country should be expecting little to no rainfall. And uh, maybe moving on to Tuesday or Tuesday and Wednesday, we are expecting that Hopo Chingono could get arrested because he has been exposing a lot of corruption. And even if we take a look at some of his tweets here, you can actually tell that Uyu Munya Garisa has surrendered to Jerry and he misses prison. Moving on to Thursday, we should be expecting Cyclone Beat to be causing problems in the committee party here, as you can see. But the Cyclone won't last too long because he has been recalled by his party. So, uh, this cyclone maybe will take two or three days but it shouldn't last too long eh? and as we are moving closer and closer to the elections we're expecting more and more propaganda to be coming from state institutions zbc herald as you can see look at this look at this headline here it's it's not true so like, this happens propaganda happens every time when we are moving closer to elections but other than that the whole country should be expecting a lot of sunshine and more happiness because lockdown measures they've been eased back to you comrade yeah? Thanks tonight. This week, a Methodist church moms has broken the internet. Well, the Zimbabwean internet. Oh, well, kind of. Okay, she broke Zim Twitter and WhatsApp, which is like the whole of the internet for us Zimbabweans. In other countries, Kim Kardashian breaks the internet with nude pics. But no, us Zimbos are more God-fearing peeps. We prefer our internet breakers fully clothed and preferably going to church. Chivu residents have accused their rural district council of ignoring their petitions about poor services and have warned of impending jambanja. The residents allege that they've presented many petitions, but the authorities have never responded. The council can allegedly go for weeks without collecting refuse and burst sewer pipes are rampant. It sounds like they are inspired by the Harare City Council. For more information about the Chivu resident struggle, see our sister publication, Open Council Mashrimbo. The hashtag Stop the Patriotic Bill was trending on Zim Twitter this week thanks to the inspiring young activist Namatai Kwekweza. What is this patriotic bill exactly about, you ask? Well, basically, next time the hulment is beating you and you decide to ask for international solidarity by coming up with a hashtag like Zimbabwean Lives Matter, you can be criminalized and go kuje. Sakaya, no one. So raise awareness about this repressive bill with the people that you know. And let's make our voices heard so that we stop it. Because our lives are on the line. Thanks for joining us on the week. Follow Magama TV on social media. I've been Comrade Fatso. You have been the people. This has been the week. Thank you. Pass in the Patriotic Bill and foot set.